Hello and welcome to the Christmas train modification special. Um, I got this for Christmas and uh, did go ahead and get the power power functions add-on and this is modified to the Lego instructions on how to power it with one exception. Lego wants the IR receiver right here. Well, the IR receiver is gray. It totally ruins the look of the train in my opinion, putting it there. But there is plenty of room inside the cab. So with a pretty easy modification to the roof, right here you can see on the dome the uh, where the receiver actually is, we're able to keep the maintain the look of the train as good as possible around back I just best I could do under the circumstances with the short length of this train ah, is hang that light over the orange uh, channel selector it's not ideal but it works um, another problem you kind of run into is there's not really a good place to put these wires to where they'll stay it's not like the freight trains where you run them underneath plates uh, it's not terrible but it could be better and as far as the tender goes the battery pack does show um, it would not be terribly hard to cover that up a little better but as you see it power functions just fine and perhaps you'll notice that I don't have any cars attached and that is what brings us to this video on top of the engine and the tender it also came with this wagon where you can put presents in here and this Christmas tree that spins and it's really neat uh, going around the track I say this wasn't sold as a powered train so it was made to push and as you see that goes around real nice it's pretty cool uh, the one thing would be cooler is if the train just went around and the uh, tree was stationary and we might explore that here in a little bit but once you connect everything together you can hear that the train will not get traction I have to give it a little shove get started and still it will not pull it now if we remove the tree wagon as you see it does a little better you can steer it, still hear a little wheel slip in the turns but it is better now the problem with that is when she comes back around here I'll show you okay so a there is no weight on those front drive wheels at all and this smooth plastic track offers very little friction which is good for rolling stock it means you can pull the stuff easier but that also said the more drag you have the less traction you're going to have and for the most part these wagons roll pretty easy with the exception of this guy here and the reason for that is it's geared on the bottom so as opposed to your standard rolling stock axles here you see on the caboose which are metal very very low friction you have a, a gear mechanism which is resistance in and of itself and you can see these there's plenty of slop here so these aren't wedged in there and even these <coughs> wheels using the uh, Technic pins it's a lot more friction than the metal axles but right here is the main culprit that gear that turns the tree now 
there's a couple things that we're going to tackle in this video. The first one is, as you saw, it even struggled without that wagon. And any amount of train is only as good as the wagons it can pull. Even this, which is like a little decorative, fun looking thing. So we need to get some weight up here. Now I did try some lead weights. I was I was gonna fill the the funnel with some weights, but that didn't do nearly enough. Now the other thing you have that's already pretty heavy is this tender. Now before anybody says, well, why didn't you just put the uh, drive mechanism on the tender then? Well, it's not quite as simple as that. Um, here is a train power functions motor. There's your tender. I'll try to get the best shot. So you can see it's already longer than that. And if you line up the uh, the rolling stock uh, center axles with where the uh, drive gears go, you can see it's also taller. I would need to raise the height by uh, two plates, which is fine because you do have some height to give yet. I mean, granted, tenders are normally shorter than other wagons, but you have some height there to give, and here on the engine. So even being two plates higher, it's not going to look super funky, but it is a challenge. It's not as easy as the basically plug-and-play design that LEGO went with. So first thing we're going to try is powering the tender instead of the train. And see if that gives us enough weight to pull the Christmas tree wagon. If not, we're going to have to modify the Christmas tree wagon. Okay, as I talked about earlier, we want to preserve as much um, space as we can from the height. We don't want this thing to be extremely tall. And thankfully, still on, this bottom part of these battery packs are um, open in the middle so if you put a, a plate with uh, pinholes in it and the battery pack directly on that you save yourself uh, a whole tile worth of height so you know, assuming the battery pack is the top top level yeah you're still going to be a pretty good, pretty good uh, height ratio to the rest of the the wagons. <clears throat> so the next order of business is making this fit under here without adding any height. All right, here's our uh, test run mock-up. Uh, the tender is pretty much complete. I'll do a little more detailed look here in a second. But I just want to make sure that everything works at least better than it did. So here's its trial run before I put anything back together. I would say that that's functioning pretty dang well. So let's do the detail work and uh, we'll be done. All right, and there's my completed tender. See in the front here, uh, we just have slats. Uh, gives you room to get your wires through and also gives you a dead space in there to hide some of the, the wires. Like I said earlier, that was kind of problematic. Top, I just kind of dressed up with some uh, studs uh, give it more of a cool look. Uh, this uh, Technic ball here is the power button. I uh, see the light come on through there. I have some uh, smoke gray uh, cheese wedge. Uh, the majority of this is the same exact. Uh, so this is the same. These sides are the same. The only thing I did was add uh, one uh, 
one stud length up front with the slats and then the undercarriage I still have not quite figured out what I want to do down here um, I definitely need to bring it down and give it something that looks suspension like so we'll work on that And there you have it. With relatively minimal modifications, we were able to motorize this holiday train. And in my opinion, I think the tender even looks a little better than it did uh, as a pushing train. Uh, you guys tell me what you think, but I definitely think this is a superior modification to what LEGO recommended. Now, as far as the look of the locomotive here, uh, to me, no real change. I mean, around the back, yeah, you can see that. You're just so limited on the short length of this train, but it does look cute and Christmassy. And the tender, not a huge difference, in my opinion. And the way the coal is in there, I think it's actually a little better. And as you saw going around, the Christmas tree does spin. Wesley, come here. What is it? What's that? It's a Christmas tree. What's it doing? It's running. Super fast. Yeah, do you like it running fast? Yeah. All right. Well, until next time. Happy Bill.